Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 138. Day 3138. 3 is to signify the fact that we are in third edition. Third edition, day 138. We are solving problem from the practice test number one, the first practice test. And we are on page number 359, problem number 21. Turn to page number 359, take a look at the problem there, and you will see that there's a chart that accompanies it. I'm going to reproduce the chart, but not in its entirety. Only, I'm going to reproduce only the parts that we need, only the parts that are relevant. So here we go, very quickly. So our chart is going to start out not at zero, but about 100. And then we're going to go up to 200 and 300. And then the speed goes all the way up to... 1 through 5 is what we need actually. We're not interested in all, uh, after 5 because it's just boring bits. So let's go up to 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. There we go. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And this is the speed. On x axis, on x axis we have the speed measured in miles per, per hour. And on the y axis, we have the energy that is used, energy burn, energy used, measured in joule per meter. We don't have to worry about any of those. Let's just draw it, okay? And there are two two graphs that are given to us: one for running and one for walking. Let's let's do the running first. Let's do the walking first. Let's do the walking first, which is the bottom one here. It starts out, I could have done it ahead of time, but I think it's better that we do it together. So if you look at the chart very closely, it starts out at, at, at 2, at about, this is one, 150, a little under that, at 2. And then, uh, it, by the time you get to 3, it's a little over 150. And there is one, one more in between. And then by the time you get to 4, 4 miles per hour, when your speed reaches 4 miles per hour, it's a little more than 200 at 4. And by the time you get to 5 miles per hour, then it's more than 300. Somewhere way up there. There you go. Let's join you. Let's join you, shall we? So it looks something like this. Well, Let's do the second one, second one, which is the darker one, which is for the running, and it starts out at, uh, again at 2, at a little over 300, at 2, but at a little over 300, somewhere here, then it goes to 300, does it go to 300, very, very quickly, 2, little under, little under 3, little under 3 at 3 then it goes to this is this is 1 250 a little bit more and then it just then it just levels off and we are not interested in any of that we just want to answer the question it's a very simple answer very simple question, so I don't want to spend too much time here. So it looks like it's a straight line here first, and then it just sort of goes like that. Now, now let's read. Now read, let's read the question. So that's that's. It doesn't matter which one is which. As you read the question, it really doesn't matter. It says actually it does matter. Actually, what am I thinking? It says in which speed range? In which speed range? So we have to identify the speed the speed range. Is it between one and two, or one and one and a half, and so on and so forth? in which speed range is the energy consumed per meter. As you're walking or running, you're consuming energy, which is being measured in joules, joules per meter, how many joules are burning per meter. And if you don't know what a joule is, don't worry about it. But if you've studied physics, you will know that that's the unit of energy. 
in, in which range is the, is the amount of energy that you burn, amount of energy that you use per meter for running, is twice that of walking. Is twice that of walking. And you can see the amount of energy that you're burning, which is going to be twice of walking, is not going to be anywhere here. It's not going to be anywhere here. I'm looking for a different color here. Let's just take the black. You see, you're burning 200 joules here, and that one is not 400. You're burning more than 150. That's not more than 300. As you can see, it's not anywhere here. The amount of amount, the amount of amount of energy that you're going to burn while you are running at the rate of two times of what you're burning when you're walking, it's going to happen somewhere here. Somewhere here, as you can see, this is about uh, this is about this is 150. If this is little under 150, it has to be little under 300. A little under 300. You see, this is little under 300 right here, right somewhere here, right somewhere here. This is little. This is little under 150. This is right here. This is little under 150. This is little under 300. Somewhere here, somewhere here in this range. And again, if I had done a very good job, actually, we could. It's, it's between. Since they do not give in terms of hours, between two and three, but there is no two and three. The only since there is no two and three, the only option that is there is between two and a half and three. It's between two and a half and three. Which range is between when you're going between two and a half miles per hour and when you're going three miles per hour. The range is between two and a half miles per hour to three miles per hour. In that range, in that range. You, you will consume twice the amount of energy if you're running as opposed to walking. How are you measure the amount of consumption? That's what it is. Do you understand? It's a lot of work or something very simple, because other, but without the chart we cannot answer it. And it was very simple indeed. It was so simple in fact that 70% of people had absolutely no trouble with it. Let's do the next one, shall we? Let's do the next one. Number 22. Number 22 is also well, you decide whether or not it's straightforward, but it won't take that long. It won't take long at all. Number 22. I could erase everything, but I don't want to. It says, if n, if n is equal to 2 raised to 3rd, then, then what's the value of n raised to n? What's the value of n raised to n? Well, if n is raised, if n is equal to, if, if n is equal to 2 raised to 3, 2 raised to 3, and that implies that n must be 8. So essentially what they're looking for is how much is 8 raised to 8. How much is 8 raised to 8. But 8 of course can be written as 2 raised to 3 uh, right here. So 2 raised to 3 raised to 8 is what you're looking for. 2 raised to 3 raised to 8 we know that uh, which, which simply means we have 8 of them. 2 raised to 3 times 2 raised to 3 times 2 raised to 3. 8 of them. It's we're going to add 3 8 times, or we can simply multiply 3 times 8. So it's just simply 3 times 8, and the answer is, is 2 raised to 24. I do not know why something as simple as that, why so many people have trouble with it. So the correct answer, first of all, let's identify the correct answer. The correct answer is, was it B? But strangely enough, only a third of the people got this question right. Only a third of the people. 35%. 65% of people who took the exam did not do it, did not get it right. We could very easily move on to the next question and take care of it, but the next question is you turn the page, it's a little bit complicated and I don't want to do it, at, uh, and it's a geometry question, let's keep it separate. We're going to do question number 23 that you see on the next page in the next video by itself and in the following video, on, on, on the 10th video, because we started solving the exam at uh, day 131. Tomorrow is going to be day 139 and then 140 is so on the 10th video. Not tomorrow, but day after tomorrow we'll do question number 24 and 25 together. Alright? Bye now.